Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm an engineer at CrowdStrike. Uh, I'm obliged to say we're hiring. If anyone's interested in looking to work on Ember apps, we've got lots. Um, basically, there's mo uh, the majority of us are based in, in London, um, and basically we're purely Ember on the front end. So if you're here, you're probably interested in that. Uh, my talk is called Wanna Be Content Rich because I needed a headline that sounded more interesting than text editing. Um, so sometimes text editing experiences are just not as good as they should be. When I drop an image into a text area at a particular point, this is not the result I was hoping for. So there's no visual feedback. It's just put the path that, that has been generated to that, uh, to that image at the bottom of the text. So it's not even where I want it in the document. There's many types of editors you can use in your apps, either open sourced or purchased, but none of them seem to do everything well enough to become the single best choice. One format that many editors use that we're all familiar with is Markdown. Markdown is often used as a speedy way to add content creation into an app. Uh, it has widespread adoption and therefore tooling across many platforms, but in anything but the simplest use case, it quickly becomes awkward to use. Because it becomes awkward rather than impossible to do things, users will often just develop workarounds that allow them to manage, like using an external editor that offers syntax val validation and a preview. They might choose to use this to make their changes in the editor before pasting them back uh, into your app. You won't get any bug reports because nothing is broken, but it's very likely your users are not having a good time using your product. Do you have to use Markdown? No. Use MobileDoc instead. So this is what I used to think of when I first heard the term mobile doc. Um, you have to remember in the States, they call these things cell phones, not mobiles, and the authors of mobile doc are American, so that kind of makes sense. Um, but I put this image in your mind now. Mobile doc actually refers to a portable document format. Using it will allow you to create an editing experience that compares to the best editors you've used on the web. And it's not as complicated as you might think to build a rich experience for your users. I'm going to show you how right now. Uh, this is an app I built just to demo to you what MobileDoc is and how it works. The boarded area at the top is the editor, and the area at the bottom shows the MobileDoc created by the editor, rendered in a number of different ways. Currently, it's showing the JSON structure that is produced when you save a document in the editor. This is MobileDoc. The name actually refers to a specification for a JSON structure. There are a number of other parts to the ecosystem that build upon this specified format to help you produce your user experience. So zooming in on what was in the, in the bottom of the screen there, this is what a blank mobile doc looks like in terms of structure. You can see it's an object that contains keys for atoms, cards, markups, and sections. The markups array lists any formatting used, and the sections array contains the actual structure of the doc. We'll come back to atoms and cards later. Let's look at how the structure changes as text is typed into the editor. We start with one empty paragraph in the sections array. As the text is entered, you can see the mobile doc structure update. Now let's add some basic formatting. The user has used the shortcut command B to toggle the strong text before typing. You can see the structure update at the bottom of the screen. Let's look at those changes in a better formatted example and break down what's happened. The strong markup has been added to the markup array. In the sections array, the section of type one indicates this section is a markup. The first zero in the indented array is the marker type zero indicates text. The array with a single element of zero indicates the markup used. Position zero in the markup array is strong. The one that, follow, uh, that follows that indicates the markup is closed. And finally, the text that's contained within the section. Let's make that slightly more complicated and see what the structure looks like when only the one, uh, one word in the sentence is strong. If we format that a bit better, we can see that there are now three markers in the section. The first is text, denoted by the first zero, using no markups, denoted by the empty array, and is, uh, and is open, indicated by the next zero. The next marker is different in that it refers to the strong markup. There's a zero in the array versus being empty on the previous marker, and it's closed. The third marker is structured the same as the first, 
but with different text. For reference, here's a list of all the markups that are supported. That's a pretty basic overview of the structure. Let's leave it there and look at the bigger picture. There are three things that build on this mobile doc standard, parsers, renderers, and editors. Parsers allow you to manipulate the content when it's being pasted into your editor before it's saved into the mobile doc. Renderers allow you to present a mobile doc in different ways. Editors allow you to build the user experience for the content creators. Let's talk about editors first. The one you've seen in the demo is Ember Mobile Doc Editor. It uses a library called Mobile Doc Kit. This is the framework agnostic library for building mobile doc editors. Ember Mobile Doc Editor provides an abstraction using Ember components over Mobile Doc Kit. So if you're used to using Ember, this makes the process of building out additional functionality in the editor very familiar. You don't have to use this editor though, you could make your own. That's the point of mobile.kit being a separate vanilla JS library. In this demo, I've chosen to use Ember Mobile Doc Editor. Let's step through the code that's behind the example you've seen. Here's the template for the editor. That's everything on the top half of the screen of the demo app. As you see, we pass in a mobile doc for the editor to initialize itself with and an action to be called when the document is changed. In the block of the component, we pass the buttons we want to appear in the toolbar. Mobile doc editor and mobile doc section button are all provided by the Ember mobile doc add-on. And the component JS that backs that template looks like this. It's empty. I'm just using a convention of listing the attributes that can be passed into the component at the top of the file and setting the component to be tagless. Here's the output component. That's everything in the bottom half of the screen on the demo app. There are three output formats to choose from. So far you've seen the one on line nine. It's just the mobile doc stringified and indented by two spaces. The one on line 14 is Ember mobile doc DOM renderer. That will give you a faithful reproduction of what you see in the editor, but without the ability for any edits. The last one is on line 20, but we can see better what's going on with that by looking at the component JS. Here you can see on line 21, the computed property responsible for the mobile doc in text. On line 23, a new render is created. You can see that it is imported from mobile doc text renderer on line four. Let's see what these do in the demo app. Returning to our strong text example, we can see that when switching to the rendered output, it does faithfully reproduce what's seen in the editor. Then switching to the text output shows that the, the full text without any formatting. This is a good illustration of renderers. The text renderer is simply ignoring anything stored in the mobile doc text that does not apply to it. So that's pretty cool. We already have a basic what you see is what you get editor that stores content in a format that is concise and can be used selectively to render different results. It's not rich yet though. Mobile doc provides two mechanisms to achieve this. Atoms, described here, and cards described here. Now, because we're using Ember Mobile Doc Editor, we can use the helpers it provides to create atoms and cards as components. Let's build a card component now. This is gonna be quite a lot of code. The first thing we're gonna do is create a button that the user can click to add uh, the card into the editor. This is what the component JS for the button looks like. It contains a single action that's called when the button is pressed. On line 12, we tell the editor to create the card in edit mode. The first argument shown on line 13 is the name of the card. The next argument is the payload to be set on creation. Cards have an edit mode that shows a different view to the user than the rendered version. It's not used when the card is rendered by the DOM renderer. The template for the button looks like this. Not much to say about it, it's just a button. The block is used to allow you to pass optional text. This is the template for the code block editor. Now, as you may have noticed when we created the button, this card is gonna be for adding code blocks to our doc. What we want this card to be is a full what you see is what you can get experience, just like the main editor, except styled like a code block. How are we gonna do that? Let's put another mobile doc editor in the card editor. You can see that on lines two to six. We're gonna add uh, a save and cancel button to allow the user to either reverse the action of pressing the code button or save their changes. You can see the buttons on lines eight and nine. The component JS for that looks like this. It's a bit small to be able to read, so let's split it up. 
in the first part, you can see we're getting a lot of attributes passed into the component. It's worth noting that these are passed to the component from the editor, because it's the editor that actually calls this component. It's the actions that we're really interested, though. interested in, though. The save card action either takes the payload that's been edited by the user, or if that's undefined, the payload that was present when the editor was invoked. If the card has just been created, that would be the payload passed when the card was created by the button press. If the card has been saved previously, the payload will be the one stored last time the document was saved. Finally, the save card action uh, we were passed by the editor is called. The cancel card action takes the payload to see if this card has already been saved previously by fetching the created by button key from the payload. Remember we passed this payload in when the button was created, uh, when, the, when the button to create the card was pressed, sorry. If it exists, we remove the card when the cancel is pressed. If it does not exist, we cancel the card instead. That just undoes our edit session. We also need to create a component that will be used to render this content when it's not editable. It will be used by the DOM renderer, but also by the editor when the card is not being edited. This is what the template looks like. Line one calls the edit card actions passed into this component by the editor. And on line three, you can see we're using the mobile doc DOM renderer again. again. This is to render the content saved in the payload of the card, because that is the mobile doc nested in the payload. The component for it looks like this. I split it in two again so it's a bit bigger. As you can see, we're passed a load of attributes from the editor again. Amongst them is the edit card action we're calling from the template. The only other thing in that file is, to, is a check on initialization to see if there's a content saved in the payload. If not, we set the content to be a blank mobile doc. We need to register the card with the editor. We do that in the component JS for the editor. To be clear, this is not the card editor, but the editor itself, so the bit that's responsible for the top half of the screen. Now it looks like this. We have added a computer property on line eight that returns an array of cards. We use the create component card helper provided by Ember Mobile Doc Editor to do this, as you can see on line 10. The template is then changed to pass that card's array into the Ember Mobile Doc Editor component. You can see that change on line three. And the output component JS uh, the bit that's responsible for the bottom half of the screen in the, the demo app needs to be changed to create a card names array. Lines 13 and 17 of that change. And then in the template, we pass that array into the DOM renderer on line eight. So that was a lot of code. Let's see how that looks in the app and what the changes have done. You can see the editing versus rendering components being used here. So that's the editor. They fill in some text. And then we're going to save. And that's going to flip to the rendered component. Uh, and you can see the raw content of the doc updating from the payload. That's set when the button is pressed uh, to save the payload. But beyond that, it's hard to see how it's changed from that view. So let's break down the changes to the structure of the doc. It's pretty small, but hopefully you can see this. The shape is the bit that's interesting, so maybe just squint a bit. Line 33, which is right at the bottom, uh, shows where the card was created relative to the text just below it. You can see the section type is 10, indicating a card. The only valid section types are one for a markup, which basically means text, two for an image, three for a list, or 10 for a card. The zero next to it means to use position zero in the card array, our code block card. That's on line five at the top. The name of the card is specified on line six. The payload starts at line seven. As you can see on our, our code block content key on line eight, Line nine is the start of the mobile doc we saved from the editor in the card. That's the mobile doc inside the mobile doc. Now let's see what's happening with the two renderers I mentioned earlier.
If we click on the render tab, we can see the DOM renderer being used. You can see it's replicating what's shown in the editor. When I click on the text renderer, you can see that the text content from above the code block is shown, but nothing from within the code block is. That's because the text renderer doesn't know how to handle the code, blocks card pay code block cards payload. We can fix that, though. In the same way we pass the cards to be used into the editor and the DOM renderer, we also have to pass them into the text renderer. Instead of uh, a component path, we'll need to reference a file with the following structure. The name of the card has to match the name contained in the mobile doc, which you can see on line four. The type has to be text for the text renderer to use this. Line six contains the render function, which is what the text renderer will call any time it encounters a card of this type. The treatment we give here is simple. We extract the code block content key from the payload. Because this is our nested mobile.content, we then create a new instance of the mobile.text renderer to render the text contained within it, and then pass that on as the result of the render function. We then need to render, register this file with the text renderer we're using in the output area of the demo app. I've cut out the unchanged parts of this file to try and make the example a bit more concise. You can see the file we just created being imported on line two. The array of text renderers being built on line seven, and then it's passed into the renderer on line 18. And the results are. Now with the text from the code block is rendering along with the other text. So now we've successfully told the text renderer about our custom payload. But another problem that comes with creating a custom payload is being able to populate it when the appropriate content is pasted into the editor. That's where parsers come in. Mobile.kit already comes with parsers for the types supported by Mobile.doc, so pasting content from HTML works fine for those types. But for our code block card, if we copy the Tomster, and paste it in, not so much. But we can fix that by writing our own parser. Here's the parser file. Line two is basically saying, if this is not a root node and a pre-tag, do nothing, because that's all we're interested in. Otherwise, grab the text content of the node that has been pasted. That's on line seven. The content is passed to the function on line 17. It inserts the text into a mobile doc with a single paragraph. We then build a new card section on line 10 for our code block card, passing the payload created by the function under the code block content key. Remember, we're working with mobile doc inside a mobile doc here. We then add the section to the doc on line 12 and then mark the node as finished. And we have to modify the editor component, JS, to build an options object. That's on line 16. That contains an array of parser plugins, the one we created on line 19. And you can see where we import it on line two. And then pass that options object to the editor in the template, line four. And if we try the same thing again, now we get one perfectly proportioned Tomster. Also replicated perfectly in the DOM renderer and the text renderer. So now we've made our own custom content that's editable via a custom component. We've added support for it to be rendered by different renderers, and we can even manipulate the content based, uh, pasted into the editor. In the format, we specified part of the card uh, as part of the card. The one thing we've left to talk about is atoms the way MobileDoc does custom inline content. Let's create an atom that allows logos to be used instead of text. Here's the component JS we're going to create for the atom. This is just for transparency in this case. We don't actually need to do anything here. But as you can see, we have access to a load of attributes passed by the editor. The template is also simple, an image tag that uses what's stored in the image URL key of the payload uh, as the value of the source attribute. Atoms don't have an editor interface by default, so we don't need to make a component for that. We could create a button uh, on the toolbar that users, would let users add logo atoms, but let's try a different approach. Let's create an action that we'll call when the editor is created. This allows us to use the onTextInput hook on the editor, shown on line eight, 
and then specify some text to match, shown on line 9. Then what to do when that happens on line 10. We're going to replace the match text with a logo. So the first thing we do is delete the correct spaces back from the cursor position. This is done on lines 11, 12, and 14. Then we add the atom into the editor surrounded by spaces on line 16 to 24. Line 18 specifies the atom name. Line 19, the text to use in place of the atom when required. Line 20 to 22 are the payload for the atom. It contains the image URL for the logo that should be used to replace this text. Then, much the same way as we built the cards array, we need to build the atoms array. This time we use the create component atom helper, again provided by Ember Mobile Doc. Ember Mobile Doc editor, sorry. Then we need to pass the atoms array into the editor, shown here on line three, and make our action get called when the editor has been created. That's on line five. We need to create an atom names array, just like we did for the cards array earlier, and then pass that collection into the DOM renderer on line seven. And then we get this. It shows correctly in all the renderers. But there's one last thing I want to mention, and that's card options. Perhaps badly named, as they're also accessible via atoms, they can be very useful as they're provided at render time and can be used to make decisions about how to use what's stored in the mobile doc. Let's change our atom to be able to render text, emojis, or images. This might not be the most realistic example, but it should illustrate the power of options. In the atom component, we'll decide what to render based on the options passed to us. Line 14 and 15. Then we need to build a card options object shown on line 10. I'm going to set the key of logo atoms options to the value of logo atoms options, which is coming off uh, an input we're going to put on the template. That's shown on line four, and it'll appear just above the output area in the demo application. I also need to pass the card options to the DOM renderer. You can see that on line 12. Finally, we need to set the emoji to use when our text is matched. You can see that on line 22. So both an image URL and an emoji are now written into the doc as part of the payload, but the options are passed at render time, and that logic in the component is then applied. Let's look at that working. So we can see an emoji there in the raw mobile doc at the bottom of the screen. Then if I change the string that's bound uh, to the logo atom options, you can see uh, the rendered output change I can choose either an image, text, or emoji, all without editing the actual document. This is, example is very simple, but hopefully makes clear that these two data objects can be used separately or together. One baked into the doc, the other only required at the point of render. A couple of other examples could be alternative or additional content for different user roles. The user roles will be passed in as the options or charts that are past fresh data right before they're rendered. You could leverage this a lot. Hopefully, what I've demoed has shown that MobileDoc is easy to get started with and really does allow you to build whatever you want for your users. All the code I've shown here is on GitHub, so give it a look when you want to get started with MobileDoc. Thanks for your time. Any questions? So, so can you can you create tables? Does it support tables? I guess to start with, yeah. So, um, no is the answer. Um, it doesn't do it doesn't do tables and it doesn't do nested lists, but you can quite easily polyfill that by building a card basically, um, and then you have the option to choose how to render that as well. So yes, it does, but not out of the box. Um, once you get going with this, it's pretty easy to kind of do that stuff. Um, yeah.
So like the, the application we're using it for at CrowdStrike, we've polyfilled both nested lists, not polyfilled, sorry. We've filled that gap with cards for both uh, yeah, nested lists and tables. Um, so yeah, the, the renderers are more, renderers are more like the format you choose. So I guess if I was gonna try and do another renderer, you could maybe do like a PDF renderer or something like that that would take the content of the doc and then try and render that as a PDF. Um, but then you only need to, to talk in terms of, if you're just talking about web, then you'd just be talking about uh, the card that is rendered in the editor or the DOM renderer, and then you have control over what that is. It's just a component like anything else in Ember. Um, so it can literally be anything. Like you can put a whole app in there if you wanted to. Like it's, you know, the, there's no limit really to what you, what you do with it. Um, but I guess the good thing is there's that separation between configuration that can be passed in with options um, and then what's actually persisted. So I guess like in much the same way you're gonna write stuff via an API call to a database for your app, you can write that into the doc, but it means you don't have to um, store anything that's not required. There's no styling in there, so you're not bound that way. So if you, uh, you know, wanna do a refresh of all your content, there's no styling stored in there. So you can just, you know, completely change everything, how it's rendered um, and it, even if there's stuff in the dock that you're not leveraging already, you can change that as well. Thank you very much. Yeah.